Hey friends, it's art day, it's Miss Sudi. I'm so glad to see everybody. I'm really missing you now. We're getting to the end of our school year, isn't that great fun? Well, I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about one of our artists that we do this time of year called Andy Warhol. And I wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction. Do you remember this picture right here? How many times have I asked you kiddos, what is the most famous portrait in the world? And you would all, of course, know perfectly well that it is the Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa lives at the Louvre in Paris, and she is the most famous portrait in the world. And then we've talked about over the year different ways to, look, to uh, draw your face. You remember we learned about our faces and how our face is constructed with the oval shape and your hair not starting up here, but the oval is and your eyes are in the middle and uh, your mouth is in the middle and the eyes are like footballs and where the ears are. I'm sure you all will remember that lesson. And then remember that we did silhouettes and silhouettes are a sideways picture like this. Uh, that you can have mom take a picture from the side, but one of these for each one of you is in your portfolio, boys and girls, for you to, to have fun with. And then you cut this out, and then on the black paper is your picture in a silhouette. And we did a lot with silhouettes. Remember when we fractured our silhouettes with Pablo Picasso? So we took our picture of ourselves, and in this case it's T, and we cut out a silhouette of it, so just the shape, and then we cut it into pieces and then put everything back. So we fractured our silhouettes, and we made silhouettes. This is Pablo Picasso. I'm going to talk about another way to do it uh, that Andy Warhol used. Andy Warhol is a very famous name, and he did a lot of really um, fun art, a uh, very different idea about art and how he did his, uh, his paintings and, his, and his, uh, his pictures and his prints. A lot, a lot of his are prints that are made from photographs, and I'll show you how that goes in a minute. Let's talk a little bit more about this Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was called a pop artist in the 1960s. Oh my gosh, you all are going to think that so long ago. I don't. In the 1960s, after Jackson Pollock that we did last week, after Jackson Pollock, artists started wanting to be more expressive. They wanted to feel the art. They wanted to own the art. They wanted stuff that maybe not, you didn't think was like art, but they wanted to make it into art. So this was called pop art. And Andy Warhol was an early pop artist and a very good one. I'm going to show you some of his work. Then we're going to read about it. Andy Warhol, uh, he wanted to turn ordinary things into pieces of art. Now this is a picture of an exhibit and this is a grocery store and at this time in the 60s the only kind of fancy soups we had were Campbell's soups in a can so he liked the idea of taking Campbell soup cans and making them into art so this is actually a painting of one of his soup cans and he made ordinary things pieces of art that everybody could have so that was called pop this kind of time chicken this is chicken with rice soup by uh, Campbell's it was considered something that everybody could have and this little picture is a picture of him doing it on top of doing his silk screening on top of the uh, of the photograph here is a silly picture of Andy Warhol, and Andy Warhol is, is looking at 
a box of Brillo pads. Now those are scrubbers for the sink that you scrub dirt out of pans and stuff with. I think they still exist. Uh, and he would take the box and make it into a piece of art. He would paint a picture of it, or in most cases, he took a photograph of it and then he painted on top of the photograph with a process called silk screening, which is a very, and that silk screening is something I don't know how to do, but it's also quite a process and has a lot of steps and, and so you don't want to do it at home. But this is Andy Warhol looking around his Brillo, his Brillo pad pictures. He would also take things, ordinary things like Mr. Cow here. And you see he would do a picture of Mr. Cow, but he not only did one picture of Mr. Cow, he did two or three or four. So a lot of his pictures have multiples of the same picture. What I mean is just like you all have probably seen at home these Zoom meetings we've all been having since coronavirus. It's got everybody's picture. Well, that's exactly what Mr. Warhol would do, but he would make it into art. So he would have multiples of things. He also was very popular and sold a lot of his work to, um, to celebrities. So the celebrities um, would buy their portrait and it would have a whole lot of portraits in, on one page. Now, Mr. Warhol lived in New York City and you're going to hear about that. You know, I have to show you a book about that. He lived in New York City and he, he lived in a house that was a lot of stories and you'll see that in the book. But his art studio was in a storefront called The Factory. Now, The Factory was an art studio where visiting artists came to stay. You could go and do your art there at The Factory if you wanted to. It had a lot of space and that people could work on the floor and work on an easel. One of the very famous artists that worked at The Factory in the 1960s was a fabulous artist who is alive today and he is my age and his name is Jamie Wyeth. You remember Boys and Girls in the Fall we talked about the Wyeth family and their silly pigs. We looked at pictures of their, of their cute pigs and pumpkin head picture. Well this is Jamie Wyeth. This is one of the sons of Andrew Wyeth and this is, and this is Andy Warhol. So when Jamie was in New York, he worked in the factory. That's the name of the studio that belonged to Andy Warhol. A lot of portraits were done of famous people. And I will show you some of the pictures that were combinations of Warhol. They were collaborative of Warhol and Jamie Wyatt. This is a Warhol, a beautiful one, of the artist Jamie Wyatt. Now what this was, was a photograph of Jamie taken, and then Andy Warhol did a silk screen print on the top, so he put the colors on there. I'll show you another one. This is one of my favorites. This is a portrait of a president of the United States from that time, John F. Kennedy. Look at that gorgeous portrait. Portrait is by Jamie Wyeth. And so he and uh, Warhol would work together. They didn't work on this one. This is Jamie Wyeth, but it's just such a gorgeous portrait. But that's how they did it. They worked together to collaborate. This is another president of the United States. This nice gentleman is still alive. His name is Jimmy Carter. He's way up in his 90s. He's an ex-president of the United States. And this is how Andy Warhol took a photograph of of President uh, Carter and silk screened it into an Andy Warhol portrait. So um, he was a very talented artist and he did a lot of work and most museums have them. Uh, so it's something that you can see without too much trouble. The most popular ones are the ones that have all the pictures in the rows of all the, of the cans of soup and those kinds of things. So this was called 
pop art, and it was in the 1960s. Now we're going to read a little book called Uncle Andy. I love this book because this gives you a little bit of an idea about Andy Warhol and how he lived. This book is actually written by his nephew, his brother's son, who is an artist himself, and that kid's name is James Warhola. James Warhola. I love this book. You're going to love this book. Uncle Andy's. Looking back in those days, the one thing I remember most is thinking my dad had the best job in the whole world. Our yard was always so much more fun than anyone else's in the neighborhood. My oldest brother was already away at college, but there were still six of us at home. Dad had lots of jobs, but now he was mostly a junk man. Sometimes the neighbors complained that our yard looked like a junkyard. Is it clear? <laughs> the real junkyard was about a mile away on a dirt road. It was, it was a, up a really steep hill. It had everything. Old cars, old pop machines, old airplane engines, you name it. It was there on the hill. Dad's job was to take the things apart and separate the metals. Aluminum, copper, brass, and steel. When there was enough, he loaded a truck and hauled it to another junkyard. Dad was always bringing home junk and sometimes he'd say to, say, say to me, now Jamie, this can really make some good art. And then he'd put a bunch of it together with an interesting shape. Look at that shape, goes. Isn't that cute? So he's got a tire and he's got some kind of a bucket and he's got something else with all these parts and the plumber and the handle. So they would make art. Mom was always yelling at Dad, for Pete's sake, Paul, quit junking up the house. And Paul, when are you going to get rid of all that stuff anyhow? But we liked playing in the junk. One day, Dad came home from work and announced, it's time to visit Bubba and Uncle Andy in the big city. We leave tomorrow morning. Oh, we were so excited. It was not often that we got to go and visit our grandmother, our fa uh, the grandma and our famous artist uncle in New York City. We had a lot of getting ready to do. What are they getting ready to do? Dad had to work on the car. Mary and Lou and Eva had to make sandwiches. Georgie and I had to pack the car, and little Maddie and Morty, well, they didn't do so much. They were just in the way. The next morning, Mom woke us up extra early, and we were finally on our way. We had saw nothing but cornfields and cow pastures at first, and then we slowly counted the seven tunnels that it would take us to get there. When we counted the last tunnel, we perked up. The Warhol family lived near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they had to make this trip to New York. All of a sudden, the world became really different. There were giant buildings, honking taxis, and people going everywhere, every which way. Dad slowly worked his way uptown to Uncle Andy's. Look at that station wagon with all the stuff on the top. Boys and girls, this kind of a car is called a station wagon. That was before all the SUVs. This was the SUV of the time. There, were, there we were, all eight of us, standing in front of a huge black front door ringing the bell. And after a long wait, the door unlatched and slowly opened. Uncle Andy peered out for a moment and then let out a long, ooh. Dad always thought it was best not to phone ahead so that it would be a surprise. And certainly, it certainly worked, because Uncle Andy was always very surprised. He showed us in, and made, we made our way to the kitchen, where our grandmother, Bubba, drowned us with her kisses, as she always did, and fixed us dinner of salami, bread, and cheese. 
Soon all the chattering and eating came to an end and it was time for us to sleep. Uncle Andy showed us to our makeshift beds. I slept on the top floor in a pop-up, in a propped up old door covered with cushions. The bed is right here, see it? See it's on a door with cushions and he's all is surrounded by all these boxes of, of Campbell soup that are art pieces. In the morning I noticed that I was surrounded by towers of soup boxes. I thought Uncle Andy and Bubba sure liked a lot of to drink eat a lot of soup, but that wasn't it at all. Uncle Andy didn't buy those soup boxes. He built them out of wood and painted the, each one. They were art and really important too because Uncle Andy had told me uh, we were not supposed to touch them. And if you'll look and see what's around the room. The cats, you're going to hear about that in the story. Dad always remembered to bring Uncle Andy something interesting from the junkyard. This time it was a giant magnet with a bunch of bolts stuck to it. Uncle Andy peered over his glasses and as, as, at it real carefully. And after a pause, he said, oh, gee, wow. And we were, knew he really liked it because Andy didn't say much. Uncle Andy had 25 cats. And they were all named Sam. It was perfect. The house was a giant amusement park. It was perfect for hide and seek and racing. It wasn't long before the six of us were flying up and down the stairs through all the rooms like a band of wild monkeys. And here's a picture of the house. And boys and girls, this house still exists in New York City and it just sold a few years ago, again. But it has multiple stories, skinny townhome, and from the basement up to the top floor. Uncle Andy thought everything in the art in the world was art in some way or another. That's why his house was so fantastic. Each of the rooms was filled to the brim with all sorts of really neat stuff. Look what's in here. Here's one of his paintings of Marilyn Monroe. See the babies going up the stairs? Got a carousel horse and all kinds of fun stuff. See, he was just like his brother. There were always neat new things to see, too. Right in the middle of the entranceway, there was a giant piece of crumpled metal. It looked like it might have been gotten stuck there and couldn't go any farther. Andy, Uncle Andy explained to us, oh, that is a piece of fabulous art by a famous artist. We were impressed. Dad had a lot of that back home. Uncle Andy was always making art. We loved to watch him paint in his studio. He made regular stuff like soup cans and uh, Coke bottles and money looked like real art. Mary Lou and Eva and I just loved his giant pictures of Elvis Presley. That's a rock and roll singer, kiddos. Mom always was aware of unnecessary clutter, said, gee, Andy, aren't you going to get rid of all this stuff? Uncle Andy was startled and said, oh, no, this is art. It's going to be worth a lot of money. But Mom didn't understand that. See, Mom here? And she, he was right. It was worth a lot of money. Now, this is something you can still buy, boys and girls, is paint-by-number kits. I saw them on, uh, I think you can buy them on Amazon. With all the connection, the commotion that we, that we caused, Uncle Andy decided it might be better to put us all to work. It wasn't long before each of us had a different job. He knew what I like to do art, so he let me help him with this giant paint-by-number sailboat painting. See, everybody's getting into everything. See, here's a Coke bottle, and this is his giant paint-by-number. Those were very popular in the 60s. At night, Uncle Andy went out to parties to see other famous people. In the morning, we patiently sat by his door waiting for it to open so he could tell us all about who he'd met. One, once, Maddie surprised Uncle Andy by going into his room a little too early. He let out a shriek because he didn't have his wig on. 
Of course, we all knew that Uncle Andy was bald, just like our dad. Uncle Andy had a wig for every occasion. A messy wake-up wig, multicolored afternoon wigs, and formal wigs for parties. He had given, given Dad all of his old wigs, and we all played in them. See this picture, all of them, including the baby, have a wig on. Each day was a chance to see something new. We especially loved hiding in the studio when Uncle Andy had important people over to talk about his work. They would all huddle around the paintings, pointing and peering. They really thought Uncle Andy was on to something. I knew his paintings were super neat, and it made me want to do my own art when I got home. Finally, Dad announced, it's time to go home. That night, we packed up all of our things, skin, Mary Lou, and Eva made sandwiches, and Bubba, that's the grandmother, added a few salamis. Uncle Andy was on his way out the door with one of the soup can paintings. When I told him we had to leave in the morning, he replied, Oh, really? I have to go out and sell this picture to a man waiting at the corner. You know, he's the taxi cab king. He really likes my work. And then I'm going to a party, so have a fabulous trip. Anywhere else, anything was bad. So that was an important thing to say when you were in the 60s. We went to bed early. Before I knew it, Mom was wiggling my toes and saying, time to get up. Bubba helped us with our things, and we trudged out in the dark morning. At the foot of the steps, there was a bunch of boxes that Uncle Andy had left <clears throat> for all of us. A lot of neat stuff, including art supplies for me. Bubba drowned us with all those wet kisses and we got into the car. Soon we were weaving our way downtown to go through the first tunnel. We fell asleep wondering about our next trip back to see Uncle Andy. As we got older, we made many more trips back to New York and the faraway city and Dad cont continued bringing interesting junk from the junkyard for Uncle Andy. I really liked doing the art. And I learned that art is something that is all around you, all the time. In the corner of my bedroom, I made an art studio of my own. And though, although Mom fretted and fussed over the mess it all was, she didn't make me clean it up. She even woke me up early on Saturdays to drive me to art class. You know, I think Mom finally understands what art is all about. So the author of this book, this little boy, is the painter and, and Uncle Andy's uh, nephew, James Warhola. Now, it's a Polish name. These, they immigrated from Poland, the parents did. And, uh, and when, War, when, uh, when uh, Andy Warhol was getting famous, he shortened it to just be Warhol. Now, Miss Sudi, how can I do this? How can I make this into a project for me? Well, I'm going to show you a couple ways. Now, this is real important, boys and girls, that you do this just as I show you. If you do it just as I show you, it will look so cool and be an Andy Warhol. In your portfolio, boys and girls, is a paper like this. So when you take it your portfolio next week, I have put a photograph with four images of you. Layton, I'm going to borrow you to help me. Thank you, Layton. Um, now, over the years, I have figured out that if you work this in just if you do it just the way I did, I show it, it comes out really well. Whatever I do to this picture, I'm going to do to this picture. Whatever I'm going to do to this picture, I'm going to do to this picture. Uh, so if you work it like that, it comes out really nicely. Now, what tools am I using? You have your picture that's in your portfolio. You can also have mom take one and you can print it out. This is my grandson Charlie with his big piece of gum in his mouth. And you can print it in one piece like this. Just, just print it off on the printer. Or you can, you can do it in multiples if you ask your computer to do it. I just got this this morning off of, my, off of my photos. So you don't have to have this and you can keep on doing it by just taking, have mom take a picture of you and then print it up off the computer. Now, I'm, my other tools is I'm using highlighters. Highlighters are color that is transparent. What does that mean? 
That means you can see through it. Opaque means you can't see through it. These you can see through it. So I'm going to start with, I like the orange ones especially. Now, these are just office supplies, moms and dads. You should be able to get these anywhere, and I'll bet you have them around the house. Remember, none of this stuff is fancy. You can get it off. I'm going to start with the hair. Now, here's the photograph, and I, I want to apply some color, just like Andy Warhol did with his silk screen, except I'm making it easy and usable at home. You can do this right at your kitchen table. And I'm going to color the hair orange. Now, whatever I do to this picture, I'm going to do this picture. So right now, at the same time, I'm going to do Layton's hair on this picture. So both this picture and this picture are going to have orange hair. Now, the darker colors, boys and girls, can cover up features in the face. But, uh, so you just be careful what colors you use. Now, how about if I make, I'm going to now work this picture and this picture. So I'm going to use the purple, and you'll see that it, it's a lot darker. It's not quite as transparent. Make this fun, boys and girls. You don't have to. And I'm not going to do a lot to it so that you can see it, but I'm applying color just like Andy Warhol did on the top of the photograph, okay? So we've got two orange hairs, two blue hairs. Now, I'm going to take the yellow transparent and I'm going to do yellow eyes here. And I'm going to do yellow eyes here. I like that color combination. And I'm going to do green eyes here. Again, the green is a little darker. Okay. And I'm going to use pink. I'm going to do his ears pink here and his ears pink here. So whatever I do to this one, I'm doing to this one. Whatever I do to this one, I do to this one. So you work them all together. Now, let's see, I've used the green, blue, I'm going to use the blue. Okay. I think I'm going to do the shirt blue on this one. Boys and girls, it doesn't have to be really thickly colored. You can do it if you want to. You can make it real meticulous. But you can do it like I'm kind of loosely. It still gives you the effect of doing it. And then the shirt here. So you're making yourself into an Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol, I heard a story from Jamie Wyeth that when they were painting in New York in the factory, that Andy Warhol's work was so popular that he'd be working on something in the factory and they'd be working on the floor on one of his paintings and people would come right in and buy it off the floor before it was even dry. So he was very popular. Let's see here. Hmm. How about if we put an orange line around his head here? So we have a contrast in this color. As you'll see that Andy Warhol had a lot of lines like this. And you can do it however you want. Some boys and girls like to fill in the background too. And that's not idea.
And you don't have to make the you don't have to make them all exactly the same. You have to make this one this the same, this one this one the same. Anyway, you get the idea, kiddos. You just have a good time with it. If you ruin it, if you color it in too much, you can always just take another picture, ask mom to print it up for you, and then you can start again. The only thing that happens, boys and girls, is that if you if you make the if you try to make these highlighters real thick, it tears the paper. So don't be surprised. Now that see that was cool, okay. Now you can do that on the other two if you want. But anyway, that's how it looks. So it's going to turn out looking like an Andy Warhol painting. Except it's of you. Because you're the famous person in this case. Let me get let me get this one. See, here's another. See this this is a ballet dancer that was famous at the time. Look at how see how his eyes are colored and like that. So he colored things on there. So this is how you can do Andy Warhol and have a lot of fun with it. Send me a picture. Bye.